Welcome back to Clem's Content Corner. Today I am hopefully going to solve one of the great TV mysteries of recent years, or at least provide a theory which I feel has quite a lot of merit behind it. The mystery I am talking about is of course, who is H? Or more precisely, who is the final remaining member of H? To recap, after stopping the caddy at the end of Season 3, the focus in Line of Duty shifted towards bringing down the OCG's kingpin. Dot's dying declaration couldn't provide the name of the top bent copper, but initially appeared to indicate that their name began with the letter H, hence the moniker. After some reinterpretation of the video footage from Steve, asking for a lot of suspension of disbelief from the audience, we learned at the end of Season 5 that in fact the H Dot was referring to was Morse code, H and Morse being four dots implying that he was one of four at the heart of the clandestine network, with three others like himself still at large. Since then, we've seen Hilton toppled, reportedly through suicide, though circumstances imply otherwise. His body was found at the same location where Oliver Stevens Lloyd had supposedly committed suicide in 1998 after raising concerns about Sandsview Boy's home, and where Monique Binder would be murdered by the OCG in Season 5. Then it was Jill's turn. After she failed to get Ted locked up and AC-12 shut down, she sent the notorious urgent exit required text that Dot had used to trigger his forceful escape in Season 3. Alas, the same efforts weren't made for Jill, and she was left to face the consequences of her actions, with Martina Tranter, also secretly OCG, attempting to stab her to death in the AC-12 bathroom. Jill survived, being a bit tougher than she looks, and with Steve pulling the trigger for the first time in her defence. Jill then went into witness protection with a new identity. Her current whereabouts are confidential, but she isn't living in the city anymore, as we see that her new home is by the coast. And that leaves just one. So what do we know about the remaining member of H? Well, John Corbett, who was an experienced detective, was certain that H was a senior police officer. Granted, he also thought that it was Ted and was wrong about that, but if he was otherwise correct, and it would make a lot of sense considering how well connected they are in the police, we must be looking at someone of at least inspector rank, and has been for some time. That doesn't necessarily mean they outranked the likes of Hilton, in fact that would seem pretty unlikely, but they probably aren't someone directing traffic by day either. Something else worth noting is that H as a group was never an equal quadrumvirate. The real H could order Jill's death or Hilton's death, but not the other way around. Jimmy Lakewell said that the body laden with DNA and cold storage trick was a staple way of manipulating targets, including Hilton and Lakewell himself so it was always the other three subservient to the central figure. The identity of that top bent copper is also kept under wraps, even among the four. I mean, Jill is in witness protection, she is cooperating with AC-12, and AC-12 still don't know who H is. That can only mean Jill doesn't know either. Why would she hold that information back now when she's already been caught, and the OCG want her dead either way? Dot's dying declaration also provided evidence used against Patrick Fairbank in court and we see him speaking words before his injuries cause him to resort to Morse code. If he knew, that would have been the first thing he would have said when Kate started recording. Why beat about the bush on the name of the top man or woman when he was already going to die? I can only conclude that Dot, like Jill, genuinely didn't know who the top bent copper was either, and it wasn't just his injuries that saw him dodge the details. As for Hilton, we will get to that later. This strain of local organised crime in the unnamed city has been around for quite a while, as evidenced by Dot being recruited into the OCG when he was very young. Dot doesn't specify the age at which he was first groomed, but Ryan Pilkington, who is essentially the heir to the caddy role, was no older than 13 when he began working with organised crime. Dot died at the age of 39 in Season 3, so by my reckoning could have been first involved with organised crime, maybe even as early as 1990. However, we don't know that there was coordinated collusion with corrupt police at this point, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there wasn't, at least not as we know it now. From the way he is connected in both the police and the world of crime, and how effectively he has managed to stay at the top of the OCG hierarchy whilst concealing his identity from basically everyone, I expect H was there at the beginning of the police formally getting into bed with the OCG, quite possibly even being the one who initiated the arrangement using that power to put himself at the top rather than working his way up from lower level crime. Think about it, if H started off at the bottom of the OCG ladder like everyone else and just climbed, then everyone they had to work with along the way would know who they are, much like how Tommy Hunter and possibly the Sandsview VIPs, given the way he instantly recognised the list, knew that Dot was the caddy. Bent coppers can jump in at a higher level, leapfrogging tiers of grunts depending on how valuable their police influence can be, with even those there through blackmail like Hilton proving far more useful than those carrying out the common crimes. 
So to be in a position where seemingly no one in this gang or the police knows who they are, I'm thinking H had to have been the officer that oversaw police and OCG partnering up in the city for the first time, allowing H to hold an elite level of power whilst only having to disclose their identity to maybe even just one person representing the OCG, simply delegating below in the safety of anonymity from there. The earliest known police ally of the OCG was Patrick Fairbank, assisting and taking part in the abuse at Sandsview in the mid to late 1990s, and H's level of insight into current police procedures and ongoing work implies that they are still active on the force, so that probably means we are looking for someone aged 44 to 60. Looking at the themes of the last two seasons, Jed has been bringing back a lot of stuff planted early on, with characters like Ryan Pilkington, Terry Boyle and Miroslav Miskovic making returns. The Jackie Laverty case and the death of Tony Gates were also referenced in Ted's season 5 interview and that points me in the direction of a remaining senior police officer still around from the show's early days, Detective Chief Inspector Ian Buckles. Originally introduced as a DI in the opening season, Buckles was appointed as CIO of the Jackie Laverty case after it was taken out of the hands of Tony Gates. Buckles then returned in season 4, taking over as CIO of Operation Trapdoor from Ross Huntley. Who assigned Buckles as CIO of both these cases? Hilton. As early as Season 1, Hilton was already trying to lead cases away from the OCG, such as putting himself in charge of the Greek Lane murders case and pushing the idea that it was connected to terrorists rather than drug dealers, and Buckles does the same. What did Buckles do with the Jackie Laverty case? He transferred it to fraud, which as Gates said, basically closed it down since the Crown Prosecutor won't touch a laundering case which can only be attributed to someone they can't find. He led it away from the OCG. What did he do with Trapdoor? He directed suspicion onto Tim Ifield and Hannah Reznikova, even arresting Hannah, putting the search for Balaclava Man on the back burner. He led the investigation away from the OCG. Buckles used the same methods as Hilton, a known member of each, to keep organised crime from being implicated in both these cases. This might mean Hilton could have known the identity of the true H, which makes sense considering he was the only one of the three H's caught, whose death was made to look like a suicide. Hilton in particular was the one they didn't want anyone sniffing around for foul play, lest it lead them closer to the real ringleader. Back to Buckles, Ian was also the one who permitted Dot to speak to Tommy Hunter, following Hunter's arrest. In the same exchange, Buckles seemed interested in Dot taking the inspector's exam, which would see him too become a senior police officer, and we know that Dot went on to become one of the four members of H. Finally, Buckles has always been known to the viewer as at least inspector rank, and yet he seems a bit… incompetent. Hastings personally questioned his skills in the Jackie Laverty case, and was concerned that Buckles wouldn't be up to concealing Kate's undercover identity in Operation Trapdoor. What better way to divert suspicion when they're looking for a criminal mastermind of a senior police officer than by pretending to be the one senior police officer who doesn't really know what they're doing? Buckles seems like the logical fit. In terms of a satisfying conclusion, H ought to be a recurring character. It would feel quite telegraphed to introduce someone entirely new just for the purposes of revealing that they were the villain. But then it would also come across as cheap pinning the big bad role on a character with so little screen time that we simply forgot existed, and I'm really hoping it's not going to turn out that one of the main three characters is H either. So H needs to be someone that we are reasonably familiar with, someone that we have formed an impression of through which we can be misled, and someone that has been quietly in the background from the beginning to give a sense of tying all the seasons together as the overarching antagonist. Buckles fits that rule perfectly, and as much as I do just want to be right about this, it would be a fitting conclusion to have Buckles break from his mould as an officer a bit out of his depth just ambling through to turn out to be the catalyst for it all. Ok, in a bit of a Columbo move, I'm going to add just one more thing. This is a complete afterthought, it's not in my script, and I only found it when sourcing the clips to make the video, but in the scene where Ryan opens up about Gates and Tommy Hunter whilst being interviewed by Kate in Season 1, in the aftermath, Buckles suddenly shows up and appears worried. He doesn't like the idea that Kate has been interviewing Ryan and then takes over himself, even though the interview appeared to have finished. We don't know what was said in Buckles' portion of the interview, but it's another odd moment that just has me thinking that Buckles is the guy. H would know that Ryan had information on Tommy Hunter and OCG activity, and would want to know how much he had let slip to the police, and that could well be what Buckles was doing here. Considering what Ryan said implicated only Tommy Hunter by name, who then went into witness protection on Dot's recommendation just after we saw Dot speaking to Buckles about taking the inspector exam, and Hunter was subsequently killed in an ambush set up by Dot, that makes this unheard conversation between Buckles and Ryan seem all the more suspicious. That's my theory anyway. Let me know who you think is H. 
I've seen a lot of interesting suggestions in the absence of the series on our screens, and I personally can't wait to get to the bottom of this mystery. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and most importantly, have a great day.